Hey guys, Ranger here, and welcome back to another very special uh, and highly anticipated reaction and pr review. Uh, this is the Kingdom Hearts 3, This and this is to the Kingdom Hearts 3 orchestra trailer. And uh, my uh, I've had a few people asking me to check it out, uh, but my best friend sent me the link to this trailer which is, I believe, the same one that everybody else has been wanting me to check out. So, uh, it was published this... Oh my gosh! I just... I thought... The... It's already the 1st of July? Jeez. Bang! <laughs> okay, well, anyway, sorry. Well, let's go ahead and start. Oh, and this is on the... King of Hearts channel. Okay, now, oh boy, time to freak out. Starting the video, three, two, one, click. Square, Disney. Don't assume your dreams are just fantasy. If you can imagine a world, believe in it. And dive in it. Dive to the heart. Oh, Mount Olympus! Oh my gosh. So we do get to go there. Oh. Whoa, look at that background. <laughs> Goofy. <laughs> That'll be fun to use. Hayden Maleficent. あんたらに関わる。ヘイディ。楽しみだね。さあさ、帰った帰った。お帰りはあちらから。好きにするがいいさ。ただし一つだけ教えておく。この世界に黒い箱はないかい。黒い箱。あ。The huh? Rock Titan. Maybe he'll actually put up a more decent fight this time. The large body and the... The soldiers, they're back! Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. Whoa. Wow. Oh, I love this! Rain. Oh my gosh, we're, we're gonna have rain. Yeah, he's actually putting up a decent fight this time. ロクサスを復活させるという言葉。空。ザムス。お前は結局闇の力を使うのか。おお。ロクサス。ロクサス。ロクサス。ロクサス。ロクサス。ロクサス。ロクサス。ロクサス。ロクサス。ロクサス。
that you need to go back to this world because there's still some places that you didn't get to go before in Kingdom Hearts. There is, uh, and there's still enemies to fight. There is the, there is the village. Uh, there's the, there's, there's Mount Olympus. And then there's also, um, and then for bosses, there's the Cyclops. And then there's the Manticore. I believe I believe I believe it was a was a Manticore where you got to fight. Uh, I mean, where Hercules ran in ran into Meg for the first time at at the waterfall or or the river. And so there's two bosses right there that you could fight. And right off the bat, we see the command menu over on the lower left corner. And this looks like the default menu from the first Kingdom Hearts. Now I, I remember Kingdom Hearts 2 had the option to switch back to the default. Uh, KH1 command menu. This looks like that option as well. This could just be a placeholder and they're actually going to develop this one right here later. But I do hope that it does have the option. Um, I never did I never did switch to this to the first menu. I kept the default for Kingdom Hearts 2, but I do hope that it is implemented just in case people do want to switch. And we see the typical we see the we see the menus over here on the side uh, Sora, Donald, Goofy, and Hercules. Now Hercules obviously now that's interesting because we have three characters in the party here it looks like which is interesting and before in Kingdom Hearts and Kingdom Hearts 2 uh, you could have the character from a world in the party but you would have to switch out Donald or Goofy to be able to accommodate that character. Now in the story the character was always there all the characters were there but you could only have you basically could only have three characters on screen fighting at the same time. That was kind of broken away in Kingdom Hearts 2 whenever they did have some additional fights with some of the additional characters actually take place. Although Kingdom Hearts did do it a couple of times, uh, like in Monstro, whenever you got to fight alongside Riku. But Kingdom Hearts 2 was kind of more prominent in terms of it using that style. Um, but here we actually have Hercules. Now, now, one could probably theorize that the reason why that you could not have three, uh, sorry, four characters on the screen fighting enemies could have been the uh, could have been the limitations of the PS2 at the time. Pardon me, which is entire entirely possible, but. This is obviously going to be the PS4, so I'm pretty sure that it will be able to accommodate that. Um, considering the magnitude of the way that uh, Fallout 4 um, and uh, Final Fantasy 15 is, I'm pretty sure this will probably be a cakewalk for the PS4's capabilities. Um, but if this and and of course I don't want to say for sh because I don't want to say for certain on these menus here because these could because obviously these could change these could just be temporary temporary placeholders but if they stick with this menu style over on the lower on, on over on the lower right then I like it I like it it's not too big big it's not too bulky it's not taking up too much space on screen um, I think actually it could be just a little bit bigger um, I think the menus could just be a little bit bigger, just just a little bit. Um, maybe implement the option to adjust the size of it. So therefore, you could choose the size that you wanted. Like this right here is the default. You can make it a couple of sizes larger. But otherwise, this right here it's not too small. Um, I, I, again, I think it would be nice to have it just a tiny, just a sm just a smidgen larger. But otherwise, it's not taking up too much space on screen, uh, and it's not. It's noticeable. It's large enough to be noticeable, but it's not actually large. It's not too large to be, to be, to be obstructing any sort of views whatsoever. And we also see a very different animation for Sora. Sora, obviously, he's older than he was, and we also see different clothing for Sora, which I like. Now the clothing looks kind of similar to that. It's kind of looks more like a combination of the outfit between Kingdom Hearts and Kingdom Hearts 2, but I like it. I like it. It looks typical Kingdom Hearts style. And I like it. And we also get to see Mount Olympus, or I'm assuming this is Mount Olympus, and we see an interesting segment where Sora is descending into the town and from the air. And one thing, and I'm just my my mind is blown by this entrance here. And I love I love the music that's playing. And right off the bat, Sora descends and you can attack these creatures, which are what 
looks like manticores. These look like manticore based creatures. And now obviously this is still in development. It's got the Japanese uh it's got it has uh the Japanese uh voice actors right now. But the menu itself is in English. And we also see the menu over on the right seems to be in English. And interesting, I just now noticed, um, uh, also the characters' expressions on the icons over on the lower right also change. Uh, before, in the, before in every other Kingdom Hearts game, at least that I can actually recall, the characters' faces only, they, the characters only had three different facial expressions. One was the standard default happy. The second was, it was like, was a grunt whenever they would get hit. And the third was whenever Donald or Goofy was actually knocked out. Here, the characters actually have have an angry fighting face, so that's interesting. And the characters are not being hit, so that's the default. That'll probably be the default faces for the characters here. So that's cool. Now we also see the heartless. Now these are heartless that the characters are fighting. At least I believe it's heartless. Now, we do have Heartless here. Now, these are the artificial Heartless, because these are not the pure blood Heartless, because I remember in Kingdom Hearts, um, Ansem, or rather, or rather, uh, or rather Xanort, made the mention in one of the reports that he will mark all of the artificial Heartless, and these are marked with the insignia. And so these are not the pure blood, these are the artificially created Heartless. Now we see the soldiers here, but I cannot see any uh, any icons, any any emblems. Okay, yes I do. Okay, they're on the chest. Okay, there are emblems on... Okay, yeah, okay, so all these are artificial Heartless. And we see Sora using what appears to be a radical looking Keyblade. And... Which... <laughs> No, that's not the Keyblade, sorry. And we see, uh, uh, it looks, I could be wrong, but it kind of looks like Sora might be using a Keyblade, which kind of, which could be, um, the Keyblade that you got in, in, in Olympus. Okay, no, uh, because chances are, because you didn't get that until after you, fin you finished that world. But we see a really nice architectural design for the area around here, and Again, we see many of these Heartless on screen, and you're able to fight them. And we see one little segment where Sora has like a crossbow-like fight or an attack, which is really interesting. And we also have, over here on the side, we have Counter Shield, Counter Slash, which is a combination which Sora manages to use, and it creates these giant golden fists of fury, and... Sora gets to fight a lot of these uh, other creatures. Now, one thing that I'm noticing right off the bat is there is does not appear to be a health meter for the enemies. Now, in Kingdom Hearts, very early on... Okay, now, in Kingdom Hearts, it took a few levels, but you were able to unlock the scan option, the scan ability, which allows you to be able to... which display the, in, which display the enemy's HP. And in Kingdom Hearts 2, I think it was one of the first abilities that you actually got... And I used the heck out of it. Like, the moment that I got them, I equipped them right off the bat. I did not waste any time. So, and I don't know of anybody, really, that did not equip Scan at some point. Um, because you want to know how much enemy... I mean, you want to... Generally, you want to know how much HP an enemy has. So that way you know how much how much more of the... How long a fight you're in for. And whether your attacks are doing it, are doing it good or not. And so, I'm noticing there is no scan option here. There is no HP for these enemies. Um, and there does not appear to be a traditional lock-on feature. Exactly. Now, Sora does have, uh, well, what it looked like in the tra traditional sense. Okay, there is the, the minor lock feature, <clears throat> which was the default setting, or a default feature where Sora would attack the nearest enemy to him. Because we see the yellow uh, circle around the enemy. We also see another feature where Sora can stand and do like a scan. And he can scan the enemies near him. And that's got to be an attack as well. Shot lock. Okay, that's what that one's called. Okay, so Sora can actually target enemies around him and fire or shoot. Okay, that's interesting. But again, there is, doesn't appear to be any enemy, enemy scan radar 
anywhere on screen. So I don't know if it's now. Now obviously this is Olympus, so I'm not really sure if this feature ha just has not been equipped for this or if it hasn't been implemented yet but we'll just have to wait and see on that hopefully it will be implemented because how could you not be able to tell what enemies I mean how much HP the enemies had Sora can my gosh the and the features the particle effects whenever Sora has this giant sphere and it's causing what looks like sparks sparks raining down on the enemies that's incredible and Again, I love the architectural design for this. It's really gorgeous. I love the shadows and the shading in this particular area. It's beautiful, and uh, the world feels really alive. And I love the shiny, shimmering effect on the gold plating on the floor, or the ground for, for this area. There's a lot of shadows being cast. Beautiful, beautiful design. World design, soft tones, soft shading. And I love it. It really looks beautiful. And we see a nice combo attack between Sora and Goofy as well. And so the combo attacks are brought back. And it's really interesting. It's very comical, typical Goofy, where you get to throw Goofy down and he just uh, like takes out enemies near him. And then we get to see Pete and Maleficent again. And they're working together. A typical style. And, you know, at the end of Kingdom Hearts 2, we didn't really see uh, exactly what happened to Pete and Maleficent, but we knew they would survive. I mean, you can't just kill off Maleficent and Pete in Kingdom Hearts. You can't do it. It's you. It's just not something that you do traditionally with the same brain. Um, it, you just don't do it. But we see Pete and Maleficent working together again, and and I got and I'm also curious. Um, the subtitles that are on the screen, I'm not sure if this is going to be the default subtitles that are going to be featured. I kind of doubt it, but I'm kind of hoping because this just looks like typical. Like, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure this will not be, <clears throat> or I'm rather sure that this is not going to be the subtitles that they will use for the game. But um, I'm hoping that they do change the subtitles to something more along the lines of Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts 2. Um, I don't hate these subtitles, but they just kind of look standard. Uh, they don't have any flash or flair to them. And, you know, Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts 2 did. So I'm hoping that they do change it. Um, but if I could, actually, honestly, if I could get uh, the Japanese version of Kingdom Hearts, uh, of the Kingdom Hearts titles, I, I would so totally play them. Um, but we see Hades come back, and I love Hades. Hades is my favorite Disney villain. Hades is my favorite Disney villain. There is his Japanese voice act, voice actor. And again, I love the motions with Hades where he tries to tell Maleficent and Pete the exits that way. And again, I really like... Hades is my favorite Disney villain. And I love the world here. And this could be in Olympus, obviously, because of, this, of the architectural design. To Hades' left over his shoulder, we see a statue over on the side. And I love the... I love... The f I love how that the camera has a focus, has a clear focus on the foreground characters, but it has a bit of a blur in the background. It's more, it's a lot more natural, and and it's it's a lot more natural and realistic in in that nature. And I love, I really love that effect. The background also looks good too. I mean, the grass, uh, this cave area, um, or smoke area behind and. The lighting, the shadows. Oh, and something really interesting I just now noticed is while Maleficent is talking to Hades, you see the grass and everything moving behind. And you see the sun also casting shadows across, like the shad like like as if the clouds are casting shadows across the rocks. Very beautiful, very, very gorgeous. And I love the color for this. Now, Maleficent makes a mention about a distinctive black box. Obviously, Hades has no idea what she's talking about. So, a black box. So, a black box. I'm unsure what that is. I'm sure we'll find out later on. But I'm very curious as to what that means. And what it contains. I'm very curious. It's a good thing she didn't say blue box, because I would have said, You're looking for the doctor, aren't you? Um... 
like, obviously, you, you know, you'd, of course you'd want the TARDIS to be able to travel across time and space, you know. Um, but the scene also transitions to this really awesome segment where Sora is running up this, running up these cliffs, and it's raining, and it's storming, and it's, it's lightning, and it, it shows the lightning flashing on the Rock Titan, and the Rock Titan is actually back, and the Rock Titan was a pretty weak enemy, like, the Rock Titan, honestly, in Kingdom Hearts was by far one of the weakest bosses, if not the, okay, okay, like, the easiest boss that you could fight in Kingdom Hearts. He was such a pushover, and he was so, it was so easy to level grind with him, um, in the first Kingdom Hearts. All you had to do, I mean, okay, it took a freaking long time to do it, but if you were persistent, determined, and stupid enough to actually unlock the ability in the first Kingdom Hearts to be able to select, select which seed that you wanted to go to, then... Obviously, you could get a great amount of experience while doing that, but once you did that, you could fight the Rock Titan, and you would get, like, what was it, 1,200, 2,200 or something um, experience per time that you beat this guy. And I managed to unlock him, and so easy level grind. Like, once you beat this guy, level grinding, he gives you a great amount of, a great amount of experience, and he's a snap to beat. He is a snap to beat. And so, it's very easy to level grind. And so, he, he was laughable. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Like, I don't mean that in, like, poor, poor design choice. But I'm wondering if this time around, he, if he'll actually put up a better fight. Now, here it does. Here it looks like he will put up a better fight. He's actually throwing, hurt, he's actually hurling boulders at you. And I love how this layout looks. The dark, foggy background. I love the music, the or, uh, the orchestrational music that is playing here. I love it. And I love the effect here. The rain, the lightning, the moonlight casting, and the effects of Sora running in the rain. And you also get to see the large bodies. They're, they're back. Large bodies were kind of a pain. They were, also, they, they were easy, but they were kind of annoying how whenever you'd be fighting other enemies near them, and you would and you would attack how if your Keyblade just ju just hit them once, it would knock them back, and then they would hit their stomach, and then they would bounce towards you, and you didn't even attack them to begin with. And so they were kind of annoying in that way. It's kind of also annoying how they would, like, target you, and you couldn't run around them without them following you. And it was kind of a pain to do that sometimes, especially whenever there were a two or three or four of them on screen. But, like, they were a, a bit of an annoyance there, but they were pretty easy to beat. Um, but we see other enemies. Uh, we see the soldiers, obviously, and we see another flying enemy over on the right here, which is interesting. Really interested to see that. The soldiers were, were very easy as well. The soldiers weren't really a problem. Also, something with the magic-based menu over here. Uh, we see, we see Blizzaza. I'm wondering if that's a second, and it says 19-9, and second form, 29-4. And I'm wondering what that means, and it says, fire, fire, fire is a 8-2. Okay, those are countdowns. So, I'm wondering what that means. That's, that, that's a countdown, and I'm wondering what that means. Um, we see the magic, we see fire, we see fire again. Eraga, Thundaga, Blizzaga. Okay, these are third level spells here. These are third level spells. You had Fire, you had Fyra, Blizzaga. These are third level spells here, or at least unless they upgrade, <clears throat> unless they upgraded them to that these are first level spells. But these are third level spells. Going by Kingdom Hearts to Kingdom Hearts Two, these are third level spells. So I'm wondering. How far into the game is this segment, is this world? I mean, looking at the amount of HP and magic that Sora has, obviously, this could this is quite far into the game. Just theoretically here, this is quite far into the game. So obviously this is not very this could not be er, very early on. Not unless you can you not unless it's extremely easy to level up and extremely easy to get your magic leveled up. But one thing, of course, to take to you know to keep in mind, this is a demo build or this is a demo trailer. 
So this could just be the way that the game looks. You know, obviously, uh, they most likely there's a really good chance that they did not, you know, the demo, they're not going to use the typical vert level one stuff or, or magic. They're going to go with the third level. And so they, you know, just use the developer's code and or cheats, the developer's cheats, and gave themselves third level spells, max health, and such. So I'm not really sure. But again, this particular effect here with the, with the ice on the Heartless, I love that design. It really looks great. And again, I love this background where Sora has to fight the Rock Titan. I really love that and the rain particles. I think it's the first time we've actually seen rain in Kingdom Hearts. I think it's the first time we've actually seen rain in, in the Kingdom Hearts universe. And I'm really interested to see that. I really love that effect. I love that right now we're actually going to be able to see that. That we that the system will have the capabilities to be able to do that. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and then we see this other moment where Sora is blasting enemies back in Olympus. The fire effects for this one attack was great. And I love the torches, or rather the pedestals in the background with the fire. Really like that. And we see, again, we see the soldiers and another green, like the little broom-based things. And we see the shadows. Now Sora can go into second form here, and he can use a rapid attack against the enemies, which looks really great. That one attack looks great. You can also slide up platforms, which looks cool. And again, we have this rain segment where Sora's running up this mountain. And Sora can... It looks like you can attack the Rot Titan. And it looks like this is going to be a, a se, uh, sort of a segmented battle. You're not going to be able to uh, just attack the enemy directly like you're dropped into a small arena with the boss. Like typical enemies. That This looks like a segmented sort of battle where you have to attack the enemy as the opportunity arises in the game as it's scripted. Which is cool. I'm totally, I'm totally fine with that. And then we see Xehanort. And we see, we see Xehanort. And we see Xehanort and Xemnas. Uh... Stand, we see Xemnas and Xehanort standing outside of Twilight Town. Uh, standing outside the mansion in Twilight Town. And another really interesting thing, again, I really hope we get to go back to Twilight Town because I really would love to see the way that the, the way that the mansion looked. I would really love to see the way that the mansion would look in this game with these graphics. Um, because Twilight Town was one of my favorite worlds in Kingdom Hearts 2 to go to. I mean, it was just a gorgeous world. The music was very, was very, was very, very soothing, very calming, and it was one of my most favorite worlds to go to. Um, but I'm, I'm I'm looking at the at like how the grass is actually moving around the characters here. The grass never moved in Kingdom Hearts Kingdom Hearts 2. The grass did not move like that. Uh, it was just it was just stationary. Here, the grass is actually moving around the characters, which is really cool. It really adds a realistic and natural effect. And obviously, it's because of the enhanced uh, capabilities of, you know, the brand of the brand new system. Um, but it's interesting here, we have Xehanort and Xemnas together. What? But yeah, they're together outside of Twilight Town. And so I'm wondering about how we're going, and, and and it's really interesting, because Twilight Town was, a, Twilight Town, okay, now, first off, uh, Master Xehanort makes a mention about how do you expect to bring Moxes back when he should, never should have existed in the first place. And it's very true, because Roxas was created whenever Sword became a heartless in King of Hearts, whenever he sacrificed his heart to save Kyrie at Hollow Bastion. And Roxas became Sora's nobody, of course, and Naminé became Kyrie's. But obviously here, Sora wants to bring Roxas back somehow. I'm interested. I doubt it's possible. It would kind of be an interesting twist if Sora was kind of working with Matt, with Xehanort and Xemnas here. I seriously doubt that's possible. It kind of would be, would be an interesting twist, but yeah. But um, they're outside of they're outside of Twilight Town, and 
or rather outside the mansion and the mansion was sort of the in a sense the representation for Roxas because whenever because that's where Nomine uh, did did the drawings of Sora's memories and that's where that's where uh, that's where the real Ansem the wise fled to to do hit to do his research and that's where Sora was moved to why he recollected recollected his or rather while his memories were put back together and it was here at this mansion that Roxas spent his final day <clears throat> of summer obviously so I'm wondering how like it's not possible for Roxas to be there Roxas body I remember seeing a tr a clip of it. I don't remember it from a game, but I remember seeing a clip of it. I didn't watch the full thing, but I remember seeing something where um, Aqua took Roxas' body to uh, it. Well, I, 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 it might have been in, in Birth by Sleep, but something where um, Aqua took Sora's body. Sorry, where Aqua took Roxas' body and basically left it in Castle Oblivion. Um, so it's not here, but I'm wondering why they get it, why they have to come back to Twilight Town, which I'm fine with because I really want to see this world again, obviously. But again, uh, one thing that I'm noticing as well behind, is it behind, behind Zemnus, um, is the shadows that are being cast on the on on the brick here with the trees and and shrubs. I love it. I love this architectural design. I love this whole design for this whole brick wall behind him. And I also love the soft shadows that are being cast on that leather suit. Or rather, pardon me, on that leather coat. Uh, and, you know, before in the game, they were just pretty much like dark onyx black. They were just dark onyx black. And they didn't, they didn't really cast any shadows whatsoever. They were just pretty much one color. But here... You actually, they actually have a realistic leather-looking appearance to them, and have that tight-fitting, you know, that tight-fitting leather look. I love that. It it it's a beautiful design, and even the zippers, even the zipper and chains here have a, have a soft glow in the reflection of the sunlight, and even how the shadows are being cast on the side on the side of his face beautiful I love it it's really gorgeous and Zemnus makes a mention to Sora is he finally going to call upon the darkness and look at the texture on his glove too you see the tiny what appears to be these tiny little these tiny little designs in the glove in the leather glove it's not just one solid piece it's actually there's actually the texture in the glove in the leather which is what you naturally see if you look at leather and I love that effect, and, and and it's the same thing on the sleeve here. It's a it's a very tiny detail, but it really adds to the realistic nature of this. It really adds to that, and I love it. And Xanor asks if Sora or or Zemnus asks if Sora is going to call upon the darkness, and we finally get to see a really good close up of Sora's face here with Sora, Donald, and Goofy as well, and I and we get to see a, a good view of Sora's outfit and we get to see Sora for the first time I mean like with like a really good close-up of his face here now we did see him uh, rather we did see them in the other trailer yes but here we also see another look and I love the outfit design for Sora here it's kind of a combination between Kingdom it's more like that of Kingdom Hearts 2 but it has has an updated look with zippers and buttons and pockets galore I can't say anything because I like khakis simply because a lot of storage space. <laughs> but, um, but again, uh, I there's an, another really awesome design with the ground, and I love how that you see the dirt paths, how you see the breaks in the grass, how there's just like dry dirt where grass is not growing, where obviously it's been tread upon, and for a lot, and so the grass is not growing. I love it. It adds a realistic look to to the landscape and it really look it really looks good 
And you can even see the individual breaks in the grass. Like, you can even see that. It's not just one solid piece, which, you know, that did happen in Kingdom Hearts 2 before Kingdom Hearts. But here, like, you can see the shadows being cast upon it. You can see the different shades and different different saturation, different saturation with the grass. It looks great. And, again, swords are being asked, are you finally going to call upon the darkness? So, obviously, this is a question. If Sora can call upon the darkness, possibly, that does that mean that he will release release Roxas? Now this is a question. Now it is possible. If Sora would willingly sacrifice his heart, he could bring Roxas back. He could um, he he could he could release Roxas. But there's obviously some problems. One is Sora will become heartless again. Two Who's to say that whenever Roxas would be unleashed, who's to say that he would have any memories of what happened before? Who's to say that it would not all be wiped? And it would be just like he he's being born again or being cre being being created again. He has no memories whatsoever. Third, you're willingly sacrificing yourself, which you know it, it's a selfless act. It's a selfless act. And so yeah. But I'm pretty sure if Kyrie found out that Sora was contemplating this, if he is, I'm pretty sure she would beat the crap out of him with her own Keyblade. So, there's the box, the black box. I'm pretty sure it's not a flight data recorder. <laughs> pretty sure it's not a flight data recorder. Um, a black box. Okay, I just got to throw this out there. So, I'm guessing the book... So... Okay, so uh, what about Ansem's Report Zero? Where the freak is that? The one that Ansem the Wise said was the only one he actually wrote. Where's Ansem's Report Zero? Where's the book about the Heartless again that we left in Halloween Town? Whoopsie! Where the heck is that? Like, let's just leave it in a random world. I'm sure nothing bad could possibly happen. Um... But, it, but, and I'm in no way, I'm no, I'm not whatsoever making fun of the story or, des or like, writing, ri ri writing or anything. Lord knows, I love this game, and I love it to death, and this is one of my favorite games of all time. And I have so much fun with the series, I freaking love the series to death, and so, no, I'm, I, I'm not bashing it whatsoever. But, there are still some loose ends that has not been touched upon. And I love how that the I love how that the text is for this. I love I love how this looks. Kingdom Hearts with the three in the middle. I love how that looks. I want that on a shirt, okay? I want that on a shirt. I hope that around the same time that this game comes out that we get this on a shirt because I want just a solid black shirt with this logo right in the middle. That's what I want. With Disney and Square right there as well. I want that. Um but we see Xbox One and PS4. So it's going to be released on Xbox One and PS4. Um, so it's not going to be just a PlayStation exclusive like the other two games were. Uh, it does not say that it's going to be available on PC, which I'm, I'm glad for, honestly. Um, because... Because... I don't even want to imagine how some people would mod it. Um, so I am hoping that does not come out on PC... Honestly, I'm hoping it does not. I'm hoping it sticks with Xbox One and PS4. Uh, and if I get it, it will be on PS4 simply because I'm used to playing it on a PlayStation. Nothing against the Xbox. I'm not, I am not the kind of person, I am not the whole console or console versus PC thing. I'm not into that crap. I'm honestly not. I think it's ridiculous. Um, me personally, whatever suits you to play on, have fun. I don't insult anybody, and I, I don't believe in insulting any, anyone simply because they have a different console or they play on PC. I, I, I don't believe in that whatsoever. I think it's stupid. Um, I think the whole argument is stupid. Um, me, they're all good. They're all good. They all have pros and cons. They're all great. But, yeah, I'm used to playing it on a PlayStation. It's not that I prefer PlayStation over Xbox. It's simply that... I'm just used to playing it on a PlayStation. It's just called, it's a sort of nostalgic. You know, the first Kingdom Hearts is on PS2. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 is on PS2. Um, 
Birth by Sleep was on the PS was on the uh the PS Vita, was it? The Vita? The No, sorry. Sorry, uh the PSP, sorry, yeah. I, I didn't think I had a Vita. Uh the PSP and uh Kingdom Hearts. Now Kingdom Hearts, um now of course Chain of Memories came out on the Game Boy Advance, uh and then Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories re Chain of Memories came out on PS two. Um and then we had Kingdom Hearts uh Dream Drop Distance, which was on 3DS, and we had 358 over two days, which is on 3DS, and then we had Recoded, which was on 3DS. The Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5 and 2.2.8 was it? Um, collections all also came out on PS3. So yeah, most of the titles came out on the on on Sony systems. So yeah, besides with PS4, there's other games that I want to get anyway. Um, Fallout. Uh, Final Fantasy 15. Although for the Xbox One, I would like to get Forza Forza, Forza Horizon 3. Um, but um, so yeah, but most of the games I want to get are on PlayStation 4. So that's why. So obviously, making the choice, you know, you're going to go for the system that has the most games for it that you want to get. You're going to go obviously for the system that has the most games for it that you want to play. It's not about personal preference over the console. It's about the amount of games that I want to get for that particular console. And so, um, but like I said, this looks phenomenal. This looks really great. I love the graphics design. I love I love the world layout. I love the world design. The character models look phenomenal. They look fantastic. Pete, uh, Sora, Donald, and Goofy. The one thing that I was concerned about, honestly was with the updated graphics and such. I was honestly afraid that like the Disney characters Mickey, Donald, and Goofy would look too realistic. And I, 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 I don't. I don't. I don't ever, ever. That is something I forbid. I do not ever want to see something where Mickey, Donald, and Goofy make a transition from looking in the adorable, cute, regular, natural, cartoonish style that they look to the abomination that is the Smurf CGI film, not Smurfs The Lost Village. That's a beautiful, gorgeous film. No, I'm talking about the one where they go to New York. I'm talking about the first CGI film where they go to New York, and I'm talking about the sequel to that one. I'm talking about Alvin and the Chipmunks. Alvin and the Chipmunks is a sequel. Alvin and the Chipmunks shipwrecked. Or chipwrecked. Alvin and the Chipmunks. We're throwing a fourth one in there just for the heck of it. Alvin and the Chipmunks. Here's a fifth one just because we just because we feel like it. Um, I'm talking about all those. Scooby Doo, Garfield. I don't ever want to see an abomination where the characters look like an abysmal abomination in CGI. And so I was afraid, honestly, of how the characters would look. But I'm okay with this. This looks fine. This looks fine. They don't look too realistic. They don't look too out of their natural comfort zone in terms of the design. They don't look like that. Now, I, I, again, I, I have to clarify. Smurfs the Lost Village, I love. I love. The animation for that, the CGI is gorgeous. I love it. They're, it's cartoonish in its design. I got a cramp in my foot. Ow! Sorry. I got a cramp in my foot. Ow. Sorry. Um. Anyway. Ah! Cramp in my foot. Okay. I'll continue from here. Anyway, Smurfs the Lost. Ah, I got a cra Ow. Smurfs the Lost Village. I love it. I love its design. I love how it looks. It looks cartoonish. It does not look ridiculous. It looks gorgeous. I love it. The animation for the characters is cartoonish. It's cute. It's beautiful. I love it. Smurfs, the first CGI film, and the second, which I never watched, never will. It looks like somebody took a dump in the toilet, and it was blue. Cramp's gone. <clears throat> No, it's back! And so, the Smurfs, Lost Village, a good example of how CGI should make a character look cute. <clears throat> Here, Mickey looks cute in CGI. Donald and Goofy, they look kind of cute too. But, okay, it's gone. But it looks good. It looks good. It's not too... And <laughs> Pete, Maleficent, she does not look cute. Um, Hades. They all look good. They do not look out of their comfort zone. They do not look unnatural with the CGI. They they look go they they really do look great. And they really fit in this world. And they don't look too realistic. The world doesn't look too realistic either. I love how it looks. 
It looks great. It looks good. And it really does look great. And I just hope, I sincerely hope, however many other Kingdom Hearts titles that, that there are, I, e, e, even with the updated graphics and technologies, capabilities of the consoles, the, hard, uh, the hardware, please, Disney Square, do not try to make the characters look any more realistic than we have here. And I know that's probably asking a lot, but again, do not, do not pull, how many other studios did, oh gosh, okay, the other CGI films, like I mentioned, uh, the Smurfs 1 and 2, the first ones, um, Garfield 1 and 2, Scooby-Doo, uh, don't, don't do that, please, no, nobody ever do that, don't, do it, don't, do it. Please don't. Just don't. Um but yeah, I'm really, really excited for this game, honestly. And I love the orchestrational music. Like that was one of the major selling points as well for Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts every single Kingdom Hearts title had so it's like especially for me, Kingdom Hearts and Kingdom Hearts 2 is the most mem are are the most memorable. The music was just so amazing. The music for the games were just so freaking amazing. And it's it's one of those games where you hear the music. You you don't even have to be playing the game. Like there Kingdom Hearts is the only game that I've actually bought the soundtrack to. I have the for I have a Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 soundtrack. And I can be listening to those or I can be listening to them uh, on my laptop. And I can just hear the music. And every single track takes me back to the moment whenever I heard it, to the moment whenever I remember hearing it. It's memorable. It's nostalgic. And it's so beautifully orchestrated. Every single piece, every single track in the Kingdom Hearts soundtrack in the OSTs are magnificently, masterfully crafted. They are beautiful and are, and are so artistically crafted and are so soothing. Even the battle themes are just so mesmerizing. They pump you up, yet they're also, I mean, they pump you up for that, ex I mean, they get you excited. Every other track that just plays is just so soothing. It's it's calming, it's relaxing. And it's just amazing. It's amazingly orchestrated, beautifully crafted. And that's the Kingdom Hearts soundtrack. And I'm really, and already I can hear this is going to be phenomenal as well, and I'm really looking forward to it. I am so looking forward to hearing this. I know it's going to be phenomenal, and I really can't wait to hear how this is going to sound. So, again, Disney Square, thank you guys so much. Really, already really liking the look, really loving the look of this. Really looking forward to what this looks like later. Um, Again, please put the scan feature in there because I want to know how long an uh, enemy battle that I'm in for. I want to know if I'm doing anything or if I'm just tacking and slashing at, at air. Um, so please put that in there. Um, but again, this looks phenomenal. I love it. It really does look great. I'm really interested to see what's going on with the black box and what is going to happen in this. Really curious about this. Um... But again, this looks phenomenal. And so again, Disney Square, you guys, I'm loving the look of it so far. I mean, I'm, lo I'm loving the look of it already. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to everybody for all the hard work that is being put into this. It's been a long time, I know, and it's still being worked on. And I, don't, I, I know a lot of people are wondering, you know, is this game going to come out? Is this, is this is Kingdom Hearts 3 going to be the next, uh, the next um, Half-Life 3, probably? Um, but no. No, it's not going to be. Um, but again, thank you all so much for the hard work that you're putting into it. I love it already. It looks great. And... Oh, sorry. Also, uh, also, I want to thank... To, I, want, I, want, I want to give a major thanks to my best friend for sending me the link to this trailer. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. As always, you know you're the best. Uh, thank you so much. And also, I re also want to thank... Um, uh, I'll, 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 I also want to thank Master Xehanort for sending me the link as well for telling me about this. And I also want to thank everybody else 
for wanting me to check this out as well. Thank you as well so much. I'm really glad. I really, really glad that you guys want want wanted me to to check this out. Hope you guys enjoyed, and hope you guys enjoyed the reaction as well as my afterthoughts. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What do you guys think? And sorry, I got the cramp in my foot. That's never happened before while doing a video. Ow. Um, that's never happened before, but there's a first time for everything. Uh, but again, um, thank you guys again for joining me. I hope you guys enjoy, and I will see you guys in the next video that I do. Take care.